Yo, what's up? It's Cam Beans. If you guys know, I usually do record with face cam, but for this video, I truly think that it will come across better if I do it with no face cam and you guys really focus on what I'm about to say. I'm going to tell you a few things that are stopping me from going pro. So right now in front of me, I got six things that are stopping me from going pro, but then I realized as I was writing these things down that there's also things that are making me go pro. And at the moment, I am not a pro, but I do think with a couple things changing my routine, I could get to that point and make more earnings. Just on the back end, some of the things you guys don't see, I'm going to be explaining it in this video, specifically how I get better at playing the game and the mental side of playing the game. Because at the end of the day, I do do this full time. This is what I do. I make content. So I'm going to kind of tell you guys the story. Use code KenBeans, drop a like on this video, hit the sub button. And let me bring you along as I list 12 things, six and six that are making me go pro and things that are not making me go pro. We're going to start off by listing the things that are stopping me from getting to a higher level. Number one, missing out on past events and past tournaments. Throughout the four years I've been playing Fortnite since it literally first came out, there would be seasons and I'm talking specifically about solos now because these are the most important. I would purposely not play the cash cup. I took more time focusing on making content, which definitely paid off. But talking about going pro, you need to be playing the major events. Solo cash cups, duo cash cups, all the FNCSs in the past, the dream hacks, all those events, those big ones with lots of money on the line. As a content creator who was trying to get his name out, I took more time to focus on editing and making videos and didn't worry about the cup so much. What I'm doing now though to fix that, I changed my stream schedule up. So instead of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. EST, it's now Monday, Wednesday. And since the solo cash cups are on Saturday, I got rid of Friday. Friday and I stream all day on Saturday to play the cup, forcing myself to play them. But also at the same time, I want to play them, right? So there's definitely motivation to get better. Number two, this is for all my friends who struggle with confidence. I'm going to fill you in on something that I think about when I'm versing sweaty players or pros. Now, what exactly classifies a pro? I still don't even think people in the community have a definition for what qualifies a pro to be a pro. When you think about it like that, the reason I have confidence in my mechanic is because one, I know I practice literally all the time. I'm definitely up there with the mechanics of some pros at the game maybe I'm even better than some pros, but the mechanics is not the reason why I'm not winning events. It's the mental and more strategic side of Fortnite. That's why my confidence is so high because I know that for the longest time ever, I actually feel like my mechanics are at that level where I can compete with other pros, but not having confidence in yourself, that's going to drag you down way more. So in turn, when I'm versing really good people, it doesn't make me scared. It doesn't make me think that I'm going to lose when I get cracked. I treat it like any other fight and I act like I'm going to turn this around because I know the steps to do it. So you might be thinking, Ken, why did you put this on things? that are stopping me from going pro if it sounds like you already have it going the right way. Well, that's because I just kind of recently figured this out. I feel like I've always known this, but I'd say once chapter three came out, I really started implementing that and it makes me play better. Number three, it's a pretty big one. Experience in finals and what that actually means. Now in almost every single tournament you're gonna play, it's not just a one day thing and you make money or you don't. Evan CS, DreamHack, any type of cash cup, you have to get enough points the first day to qual to go into the next day to make money. Experience in finals is completely different from open. The finals experience Experience is extremely difficult to get. That's why I put it as number three as one of the things that are stopping me from going pro. Just the knowledge and understanding of how those games work, how to go about getting surge, rotating, getting to the end game with proper loot. If you're not a pro already, it's arguably probably one of the hardest things to learn about Fortnite competitive because you can't get enough practice and the only thing you can do is watch. But watching doesn't make you good enough to be able to actually do it. It might teach you a few things, but doing it in the moment is completely different. This one's not a major one. But number four is not having a duo. Not just any duo. If you're really looking to get earning, you need a duo who is practicing just as hard as you to get better at the game. Don't get me wrong. Not having a duo, I put it up here as one of the things that are stopping me from going pro. This shouldn't be an excuse for you to stop grinding. I know that if I want to get a great, great duo, someone who potentially has more earnings than me, I need to prove to them that I can do it myself in solos, that you have what it takes to get to their level. That's why I'm trying so hard in solos and duos will come. I know that. Five is a really, really big one. Not having a drop spot that has the essentials to qual. Not only the loot at the drop spot, but the the route you take once you leave that spot to get max mats, rotation, where other players are landing around you and just having that knowledge of a drop spot. I feel like so many people say, oh, I need to create a drop spot. Okay, I'm going to land backside chonkers and I'll just call it that. I'm just going to land there. I think what makes a pro a pro is that they get their mechs to a pretty decently high level, but their game sense of exactly what to do and what situation, it helps a ton in Fortnite competitive. In the past few seasons, I've definitely been working on this area and I've been interviewing pros, asking them questions. So it's becoming way more clear than it has been in the past. This is number six right before we go on to things that are making me go pro. I would say most pros that you're going to watch on stream, they're always playing really big sweats in creative. Tons of people are playing tokens, which is essentially where money's on the line and they do 2v2s to see who's going to win. Winner takes the money. This may not be the most entertaining thing to watch and probably people like content creators, they probably stream arena, pubs, because it's the actual battle royale. It's more interesting to play. So since lots of pros are always streaming these things in creative, it's not as interesting. So they probably all know that they're tanking their views because they want to get better at the game. Pros 
are addicted to getting really good at the game. One mistake in how they play, even though they might talk trash about Fortnite, they still do work on that mistake so they can get better at it, round it out, and they probably do it when no one's watching. 1 v one in creative demons, that's insanely good practice. Here's the second portion of the video. Things that I've done right to help my journey get better at the game and get more earnings. How I'm seeing tons of improvement. Number one, the biggest one too is my mental. I'm not impatient like most people to see results that I know take years to get. I feel like lots of people in Fortnite, especially if you're a part of the younger audience, you really want to rush to becoming the best possible. That's not going to work. Even if you're really cracked on Fortnite right now, I can surely imagine that you have spent a lot of time practicing to get to the level where you're at. Number two, I'm very comfortable with losing. Whenever I die in Fortnite or whenever I lose, I don't have an ego when I die, start blaming people and other things on the game. Take a step back and I think about how I could have done it better myself. People ask me all the time on stream how I keep such a good mentality for things just like this. It's because I don't care when I die anymore. It happens so much, I'm used to it. It takes pressure off myself and helps me get better because I realize that I'm not thinking with a hot head. Number three, for things that I'm doing right, I'm having an adaptive routine. People always look up videos on how to get the best routine. And yeah, I've even made some of those where I give you practical advice. I show you exact structure for how to have a good routine. But at the end of the day, I don't know what millions and millions of people individually are bad at. When I'm practicing offline, I'm always practicing random things and random edits and builds that I know I'm not that good at. You need a routine, but you need an adaptive routine. I'll practice something for like a month and then I'll switch it up. Or the entirety of every single season, I'll focus one thing that entire time to getting better at. For example, last season in chapter three, season one, I was focusing on 50-50s and learning the best ways to jump in boxes and win every time. Four, without a doubt, I'm not gonna sit here and cap with you guys. I have a good setup. 240 hertz, stable FPS, good mouse, decent keyboard and decent mouse pad with a decent amount of mouse pad space so that I have better aim. Having those things, yes, it does offer an advantage to most players. Not everyone has the things I have and I'm grateful for that. I'm not flexing on you guys. I'm telling you the reality of most pro players at this point in time. It's still possible to get earnings without stuff like this, but every single time a little Timmy comes to my chat and they say that they play on 60 FPS and they play on a normal TV with massive delay, what I tell them, yes, it's possible to become a pro, but how many obstacles do you want to overcome in order to get to that level? So they ask me, should I get a 240 hertz monitor? I answer most of the time, yeah, you should. Do I need a really good mouse or a really good keyboard to start making earnings? I tell them, yeah, it definitely helps. Do you need it? No. But if it's something you really want to do, then I would say go for it if you can afford it. Number five, I surround myself with others who want to be at the same spot that I'm looking to be in. No matter what area you do this in your life, even if it's your closest friend, sharing the same common goal with another person, it creates competition. Whether you think about it or you don't, it's just a thing people do naturally. That's what I love about all my friends who play Fortnite with me. Everyone's looking to get better. They're doing it for their brand. That's arguably one of the best things out of this entire list to going pro. Last but not least, number six, I've been finding I've been talking about this a lot without even realizing it. Hands down where I noticed the most improvement was my aim in the past, I'd say like three months. I thought I had good mechs leading up into chapter three, and I didn't think I needed a whole lot of improvement in this area. Once I started aim training three to four times a week for like 20 minutes, not that long before I hop onto the game, I noticed insane improvement in my crosshair placement, placing builds, editing, and aiming at the head after I do the craziest movement. All because I spent time thinking of a routine to get better at aiming. Mouse and keyboard controller, it does not matter. I am so happy that I put myself through all that misery of trying to aim train, especially for the first week. You don't really think it's working, but in the grind and it gets there. I'm going to continue the process and in three months or so, we're going to see the progress. There's just one last thing that I need to say. Tell me whether or not you actually like this video. Was it boring or did you like the information? I've made stuff like this in the past. It did really well, but I'm always experimenting with new content. So your feedback is the most important. Shout out to my man, Jay Wan. He's been messaging me almost every other week, showing me proof of him using code Ken Beans in the item shop. Your boy Ken believes in you guys. Stay motivated. Trust the process. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces. Peace.